Here at the Dickinson Research Center, we've been working on low pH the past few years. As many of you know by now, in no-till and reduced tillage systems, we're seeing stratified soil acidity in those top couple inches. This is happening from nitrogen fertilizer being placed in the same place year after year. We've been doing a lot of work on liming. The past few years, we've been applying lime in different parts of the state where there's no-till and where there's pH below 5.5. We've found fields below 5.5 as far east as Walsh County. So this is not just a Southwest North Dakota issue. So as we're applying these different rates of lime, we're trying to find out uh, what type of rate producers should be applying uh, with different soil types, different environments. And there's gonna be a lot of different factors that depend on uh, how much lime you're supposed to apply. But lime is the answer for these situations. We've also been looking at some Band-Aid approaches. Lime is a large expense and it's not easily accessible to a lot of producers especially for rent, rented ground, uh, where we don't want to have to put that large of an expense in. Uh, we're looking at different varieties of wheat. So there's certain varieties that do much better than others. Some of them have a gene called the ALTA1 gene. It gives them a tolerance to aluminum. In these low pH situations, aluminum that's already in the soil all of a sudden becomes soluble, and the plant can take that up and you start to have stunted root systems and, and reduced growth uh, and much lower yields. There's certain wheat varieties that can handle that aluminum and they would look just as good in low pH as they would in neutral pH. There's a lot of varieties though that they do very well in neutral pH, but you put them into low pH and they do horribly. So we want to make sure that you know that this issue is out there and that you put the right varieties of wheat in that field. If you don't choose the right variety, there are some options to get by, although it does have to be done at planting. Uh, we found that applying phosphorus in furrow at 60 pounds of P per acre in furrow with the seed actually can increase yield quite a bit. And we've also found that applying lime in furrow does not do anything at all, uh, especially with our small grains. Lime is very useful for these situations, but we're talking tons of lime. Just a small rate of 100 pounds of lime is not gonna do anything for your yield in these situations, unless you have a calcium deficiency or something like that. But lime and furrow is not really gonna do anything for you in these low pH situations. Phosphorus and furrow helps a lot. Uh, we have data showing a significant increase by applying phosphorus and furrow. And what happens there is the phosphorus binds up to the aluminum in that root zone. One of the first things we often see in these low pH situations is the phosphorus deficiency. And even though there's plenty of phosphorus there, it's bound up by that aluminum in the soil. We know that liming works. We know that certain varieties of wheat work. And we know that phosphorus and furrow works. But there's still a lot to learn on this situation. And the first step to take is to go out and soil sample. You need to know where these areas are and often, if you plant durum, uh, durum does very poorly. Uh, there are certain crops that do much worse than others, but you can really see these areas, and I'm guessing a lot of you know where these types of areas might be. One of the indicators that we found is that barnyard grass and green foxtail really thrive in these situations, so that can also be kind of an indicator for helping find those zones. So at the end of the day, uh, you need to soil sample, ideally apply lime. If that's not an option for you, go with a tolerant variety and possibly apply a high rate of phosphorus in furrow with that seed.